everyone. Merry Christmas. Christmas has just passed and I'm excited to show you what I got for Christmas. The new Sony A7R. I also got a new macro lens recently. It's an old Minolta lens. It's exactly the same design as the one Sony is currently selling. You can get it a whole lot cheaper if you just find a good macro uh, Minolta 100 online. But right now we're looking for something cold, something small, hopefully some frost. Let's get out there and see what we can find. All right, folks, let me show you my setup here. <clears throat> I've got my gigantic enduro tripod. And since it's so gigantic, I can get away with putting that center column up if I need to a little bit. I've got my A7. Try not to be too shaky for you. And I have this beautiful Minolta 100 Macro. Okay, kind of retro looking. It's exactly the same optically as the one labeled with the Sony A mount. I've got the LAEA3, which means I'm manually focusing here. And I'm shooting some of this fun detail. A frosty leaf here on this old barbecue. And I'm using a flash. And that's just so I can keep my uh, shutter speed time down a little bit. With this one, I could get away with doing just a longer exposure, so we'll do some of that. Uh, lastly here, I wanted to show you these focusing rails here. Well, a couple more things, I guess. I've got them so I can move side to side with this one. And I can move back and forth. This is essential when you're shooting one-to-one. -one. Let's see if we can focus in on this lens here. This shows you three, four, five and you can go all the way around here, this blue mark, this lens will focus at one-to-one. -one. If you're trying to shoot one-to-one -one on a tripod, you're going to drive yourself crazy because you have to move so much. And it's almost impossible to hold still enough without a tripod. So these little focusing rails, as they call, these were the cheap version on Amazon, but they work pretty well. You just twist this knob right here and that moves your camera up and down and that's how I'm focusing this. I set the magnification where I want it. Focus with these. Yeah, you do have to move your tripod around but it saves you a ton of headache. So that contraption is very very handy. Okay folks, now I want to show you something here. I don't know if you can see the focus peaking on here. It works very well, gets you close, but then Go ahead and hit your custom one up there on top and your center button and that's how you can really zoom in. You see all those individual ice crystals? You can really get your focus nailed. Okay, so nail that. I'm using the timer since my remote's uh, frozen. Hit the button, wait for a couple of seconds. You can see it's a long exposure. F18, 3.2 seconds. Okay, so you just got to worry about vibration. But other than that, it's going to look pretty good. All right, folks, let's have a look here at the uh, the shots we just made. Several things I want to show you about this new A7R camera and this uh, Minolta 100 millimeter macro lens. As its camera's new to me, I like to get out and try things. You guys may have realized that about me. Let's zoom in. Now this image, if we turn on our little overlays, you can see this is ISO 2500 f11 1 one hundredth of a second. The trick with shooting macro is shake. Camera shake, object shake, any little wind picks up. So you're constantly fighting this battle of shutter speed. Now you can see We've got a lot of detail. This is not quite one-to-one -one, um, reproduction radio ratio, but as you can see, even at ISO 2500, yeah, there's grain in there, but look at all that detail, gobs of it. Zoom out one to two, just a ton of detail, very croppable. This camera, it's amazing. The rev resolution of this thing is just crazy, okay? 
Now you, you can see some of these irritating things. This is kind of just a test of the lens. ISO 4000. You can see here, I think we've got a boatload of shake. There we go. This one's better. So ISO 4000. That's 1 to 2, 1 to 1. Again, you can see a little bit of grain when you get in this close. But amazing resolution. So let's skip over a few of these. Let's get a little closer. Okay, so we're uh, this is ISO 6400, 60th of a second, F11. Okay. You see how critical it is to get focused right? With that, even at F11, look how fast our focus drops off as it moves through the frame. But yeah, very usable, even at that kind of ISO. Now, what is your option? Um, well, as we get a little closer here, as you shoot macro, you'll find a lot of close-up shooters shoot with a flash. Very simple reason for that. It gives you much more light to work with. Okay, now we're up to F18, and you can see it's this got shake throughout it because it's just more difficult. Now ISO is down to 400, one-sixth of a second. So you can imagine this little branch is just blowing around in the wind. You can see how shallow our depth of field is at F63, trying to get a little more shutter speed out of that just for fun. So let's slide over here and see what happens when you start using a flash. So F9, ISO 400, again, very shallow depth of field. You can see these little square crystals, pretty amazing how much detail we have here at 100%. Look at that, crazy. But let's start to do some fun things with flash here. Another cool thing about using the flash, not only do you get your shutter speed up there, you get to really control what sees what. Now we could, I could have used a, some kind of light, light modifier, but here I'm shooting at f32. Now the other thing to worry about at f32 is diffraction, and we're right into one to one. Now, I think from this test today, I would probably shoot just back from one to one. Give myself a little bit of flexibility there. Uh, it doesn't seem to be quite as sharp at one to one as it does if you just back it off just a little bit. So that's F32. These are all at F32. Pretty neat shots. Let's go to one to two here. So you can see it's just a, that diffraction's kind of killing us just a little bit. Not bad. It's still a neat image. You get the nice black background. It really gives you an isolation feeling by shooting with a flash. This one needs a little bit more exposure, I would think. Maybe a little more contrast. Something like that. Let's go to one to two. So the softening, I think, is mostly diffraction, but a little bit because just that one to one reproduction. Now let's jump over here. Maybe I'll just hurry and cycle through some of these. So a lot of these, the exact same shot, and this is with the uh, ambient mixed in. A lot of these are just relying on flash only. So pretty neat what you can do just by moving that flash around. So I just had the camera set on a tripod with the timer, and then I just held the flash wherever I wanted it with a little re wireless remote thing. So now let's look at the end. This is where we can really try um, try our resolution. Everything's solid. This thing wasn't moving. So let's have a look. This is F18 ISO 400. We shot this with a flash. So let's zoom in to one to one and just have a look. Now here we go. Take a look at this. F18, so we're trying to minimize diffraction a little bit. Check out the detail. Who knew these leaves were furry? I didn't. Certainly didn't look furry to me when I was looking at it, but that is impressive. You can see how critical it is to get focus right on. 
ISO 400 is nice and clean. Let's back off to 1 to 2. I mean, that's pretty cool. And again, just by moving your light around, you can get a whole different feel to these things. A little more solemn. But pretty darn neat overall. Here's a couple shots at the end without the flash. Again, this is 3.2 seconds, so a very long shutter speed, but everything was pretty much rock solid. Look at the kind of detail we're pulling out of that. Pretty incredible, if you ask me. So, so there you go. If you're looking for a nice 100 millimeter macro, gives you a little bit more. Well, it gives you a lot more working distance than the 30 millimeter E mount. Plus, this is a full frame lens, so it works on the A7 and the A7R. Of course, you have to use an A mount adapter. I'm using the LAE LEA three with this manually focusing and we're getting some crazy detail and resolution out of this thing hey thanks for watching please check back for more we'll be posting more about the a7 a7r combo i don't have the a7 just the a7r uh, trying out different uh, various e-mount lenses uh, we'll be trying out some a-mount lenses and we're going to see where this thing will take us hey thanks for watching